that's we're trying to bring him in to the fold as a way to like, hey, you know, this, you know, we can help you out or whatever, you know, like join our family. So it was like a lot of the fantasy booking had to do with. Uh, Didn't they kidnap him at this point? Yes. Yeah. Like that's and he came back out and he came out the next week and he was a part of it. Because they just right. jump suit. like they kidnapped and that's all, Kane. That's something. all. That, and that's all they did with that. They like they did some build up to it, but that's all they actually did with it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then it was like like Ronnie said, the couple weeks or whatever of him wearing the jumpsuit. But there was a lot of fantasy booking of like, okay, well, if they're gonna take it this far, they can do a whole thing where it's like, uh, okay, quick reminder, this was bef- this was before the Royal Rumble, correct? Mm-hmm. Okay, because like I think one of the one of the big things was like I kind of feel like some of the fantasy booking was what they actually did with Randy Orton uh, a couple a couple years down the line okay. because that was when Orton was a part of the family quote unquote yeah and won the rumble I think some of the fantasy booking I saw had it where Daniel Bryan won the rumble as part of the Wyatt family and maybe they would have done something in a similar vein Mm -hmm. but it's like at the very either that or at least have that particular feud culminate at the rumble maybe have daniel bryan eliminate bray wyatt at the rumble and and we go from there you know right but instead we had it culminate at this slightly random cage match against the usos so that was basically which, which it. Which led you know? into a match that was the opening match at Royal Rumble between Bray and, and Daniel Bryan, which was hot, if not the highest, uh-huh. positively hottest thing of the night at the Pittsburgh-based Royal Rumble that we attended, other than some stuff with CM Punk, I'm sure, last night mm-hmm. for CM Punk the also. Last, the last CM Punk show, yeah. Sorry, guys. Um, so... Uh, well, let me let me read Mad Mike's uh, mail on this since he's he's out for this week. Uh, so he is saying, "Greetings, fellow Mayhemers from the dreaded swamp known as New Jersey." Mm-hmm. Uh, so the assignment this week was an interesting one, especially given uh, what else happened with Bray this week. Mm-hmm. The match itself was perfectly fine. I think ca- tag team cage matches need to be used uh, more often, as it always creates a fun dynamic. Uh, I miss being able to <laughs> tell the Usos apart from their face paint, even if Lawler can't. Also, this commentary team was Jerry Lawler, Cole, and JBL. Well, what are we doing at this point? Um, but even as our so-called professor pointed out, the assignment isn't about the match. It's about the aftermath. I had to say, as hot as the crowd of reaction was, I remembered this turn being a, a bit more dramatic than it was. I know Brian wasn't in coveralls for that long, but uh, I don't I don't know. Just the, the turn just seemed ineffective. Maybe it's just because uh, I'm I'm looking at it knowing and nothing uh, really happened from this. Uh, but it's a very but it's a very of its time moment. Well, that's it for me. Oh God, why is Blister Abigail here? Uh, White Alchemist standing from this transmission. Um, so my take on things. Uh, and, and I actually watched because I, I, they bookended the the show. They actually started with a match with the Usos at the beginning of the show. Uh, which got squashed with all the Wyatt family getting involved and everything, and of course turned into a cage match by the end. Uh, so by the way, side note, um, our can anybody guess who the general manager was at this time? Ooh. Quick guess. Um, twenty fourteen. What's that? Oh him. Uh, no, Alex. Jeremy Maddox. Jeremy? What? Brad, Brad Maddox. Brad Maddox. Thank you. Where did I get Jeremy from? Uh, I that was Jeremy Maddox. <laughs> uh, but anyways. I like Brad Maddox. I, love that I had, wish they would have done something. I love that they, they had kick on his, on his, on his boot. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> anyways. Uh, I So I watched that. No, the, the match was fun. Um, I, 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 I also remember this being a dramatic turn situation. Um Looking at this match and recalling what happens next at Royal Rumble and the fan reaction that we experienced, and also looking in the chapters and seeing Batista's returning at Royal Rumble was in the promos that night. It's like, okay, 
all right, I I remember exactly where we were in the feelings at this time. Mm-hmm. Um, yes, it was quick, fantasy booking aside and everything like that. Um, but I think they were doing several weeks. You know, this was this is an over Christmas era thing because remember this was the second week of January, so we had probably bullshit Christmas show three weeks before this. Whatever happened, that so you talk about the time frame, and then you need a couple of weeks to build to the actual Natural Royal Rumble. So, um, I I I think, you know, pretty expertly done as far as a, a, a pulling this kind of swerve at the end. I love how, and again, being a little fresher with this in my mind than you guys haven't just watched this today. Uh, remember there was that thing where you did something wrong, and and why it would, uh, uh put you in the sister Abigail and take you out kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So they did that. And then Brian wiggles out and goes at it with him and takes the overalls off and everybody's turn whole time during this match. Everybody's saying enchanting Daniel Bryan, right? As if he hasn't changed as if trying to snap him out of it. Like one of the mm-hmm. strongest cheers. We don't get cheers like this anymore. Oh, well, none of us, they, we don't get any <laughs> yeah. cheers anymore. Let's be honest. <laughs> but like the strength of this, um, and to get to the end when he turns and he's finally doing the yes chance, I forgot how amazing it was to see an entire arena of thousands of people in sync doing the movements. Mm. That is some attitude area era shit right there as far as crowd interaction. And it's fucking phenomenal and shame on WWE for the things they were trying to do in this era uh, and not recognizing and capitalizing on it. I mean, how many times have, you know, Braun Strowman should have been champion two years before he was, yeah. right? Um, and who knows whatever reasons they give for it, weird reasons, audiences of one, as somebody mentioned in the chat room earlier when we were talking about tapings, but man, did they almost miss the boat on this. And mm-hmm. man, Daniel Bryan could have been somebody else's cash cow if he got frustrated mm-hmm. enough. Um, but uh, you 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 watch this again and you remember Royal Rumble and you're saying, of course, Royal Rumble fell the fuck apart because every fan just unilaterally is behind Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. Uh, can you, um, can it's, you imagine a Daniel Bryan in AEW if AEW was a thing back then? Oh God! Oh, give me, give me, give me an, Daniel Bryan in AEW now! Yeah. Jeez, jeez, yeah. that would be incredible. Yeah. I mean, and and the way that things are going, I could see him getting pissed off and leaving. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's been. You ever hear a podcast with him? He does not like. He feels guilty being a wrestler on television. Really? He does. He feels wow. like the people watching him and putting so much energy into him could be doing things better with their time. Wow. <laughs> uh, I believe he was. it was one of the first episodes of him on Jimmy Jacobs' podcast. Um, go back and listen to that. Like, that's, it's, he's not, he's happy to wrestle. He's not happy to be, have, <laughs> he's not happy. He thinks the fans can do better than him in life choices, apparently. Is, is was my inter- inter- interpretation of it, so uh, it was, and I get it. I get. It. I, I I I understand where he was coming from, you know, given his his worldviews and everything. But uh, it was it was just wild to hear that. I'm just like, wow. Um, of course, you're never going to hear that except for like an off podcast, like Jimmy Jacobs, you know, <laughs> or something like that. But yeah, it's it's fascinating. So, anyways, um with that so that, that no it was it was a good moment and um and it, it gave you uh when you get back to the yes chant i get my uh i get the i get that wrestling chill um like what i was talking about when if the hulk hogan music hits and he walks out given the uh ear the ear sign like i'm going to get the wrestling chills i'm going to be eight year old uh a uh, uh, little me again uh, uh, watching the uh, WrestleMania five tape uh, for the hundredth time, you know, it's that's just where I'm going to be, and and just like that, I was taken back to 2014 and how amazing that was, you know, and it all came crashing down and hurt inside. Uh, but anyways, we have a new assignment, Jacob Edwin. 
uh, has an assignment that I have queued up over here. And let's see what he has in store for us this time. What era are we going to go into here in professional wrestling?